Wonderful. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you. I wonder if you were here or not. That's good. Well, welcome to Baptism Sunday. We um, look at this baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3. Um, the context is that John the Baptist is baptizing, and his is a baptism of repentance. And so um, Jesus is coming um, just like so many that came to the Jordan River uh, to be baptized. Jesus didn't need to be baptized because uh, it was a baptism for sin. It was a baptism of repentance. It was a baptism to acknowledge that one had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And yet Jesus had not done that. And yet he went through the waters of baptism. So if he did that, then who am I to sit down and argue uh, about that sort of thing? So Jesus is the one who set the standard for all of us as an example that baptism is something that he requires. It is not a soft option. It's not something that has a lot of wiggle room in it. Now, there's things that we get involved in that sometimes, well, that's a personal preference. And there are chapters on those sort of things like food and days of the week and all sorts of other things. But when it comes to baptism, the language that the Bible uses is not, it's command language. It's not language like, well, I can leave it or, or not. And there's something in it that God requires, and if obeyed, and if done uh, well, and done before the Lord in humility and acknowledgement, well, I've watched over the years, I don't know how many, we've, we've done in the last seven years over 300 baptisms, and uh, the fruit from it is just incredible. Yeah, I have those, some of those that we baptized fallen away again, yeah, have some, um, you know, not taking it that seriously, probably, but the vast majority, the fruit in their life has been tremendous. But the church overall, including this church's history, would limit baptism primarily to the baptism of repentance. And yet in this baptism uh, of Jesus, it's interesting that... Um, the writer, Matthew, goes on to say, uh, John says, you know what? I baptize with water, but there's one who's coming after me who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. Well, right then and there, he says, there's another type of baptism. And then you go on, um, even in Jewish ceremony and tradition, probably the most famous one that we're aware of in our non-Jewish world is a thing called bar mitzvah. That 12, 13-year-old time frame with a young man, particularly uh, where they would have a ceremony and they would acknowledge the transition from childhood to coming into manhood, and they would call it the bar mitzvah. Now, it was marked not only by food and ceremonies and saying certain things, but it was also marked by baptism. They would baptize the young man, all right? So that's one. There, there, there's several. And what we've seen since we felt the Lord say to us, to, I want you to, in a sense, take off the boundaries and the borders that, that you've put around my baptism and expand it and let me use it in a number of ways in people's lives. So we've baptized people for ministry. We've baptized people for missionary service. We've baptized people for rededication. We've uh, baptized people also for repentance and for salvation and for all the various things that it's traditionally used for. We've done that, and there'll be those that will be today uh, as well. But we've baptized people for a number of things that the Holy Spirit has knocked on their door. And we've baptized people who've been prepared. We've got numbers of people. We've got three that have uh, put their name down for this service that we're going to baptize. But you know what? The Holy Spirit may speak to you. There may be somebody that stayed away today because they thought, oh, my goodness, somebody, the Holy Spirit might just knock on my door <laughs> and, and require me to get in that pool. So we've had well-dressed, incredibly, impeccably dressed people where they didn't think, weren't expecting, and the Holy Spirit once said, get in that pool. 
make a fresh dedication of your life to me. So we're, we're uh, unapologetic for that, folks. We do want an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is absolutely free to do what he wants to do. And so today, this pool uh, is just water, but it is a transformational zone. I've stood in that water, and let me tell you something, the power of God will be all over this place. It's right there. That's the center of the power of God and the presence of God here at Change Point today. So it's very powerful. But when Jesus got baptized, I want to read this and then just give you some practical instructions for those that have been around, you know how it goes, versus those that maybe this is your first time. Just some practicals that help us, and then we're going to get launched here. I want to read about after his baptism. It says, after his baptism, Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Now, it's interesting in the life of Christ, in terms of baptism, even though he wasn't a sinner, God used baptism in his life, not as an interest way uh, to uh, just a, a greater relationship with God. He actually used it as the opening for his ministry because it's after his baptism that Jesus began his ministry. But before he had ever done any miracle, before he had said anything, before any parable teaching, before the, the greatest sermon that's ever been preached on the planet called the Sermon on the Mount, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He hadn't done anything. He hadn't done anything to earn anything. He was given that status as a son and say, I love you. I'm pleased with you. And... Uh, the only thing he had done in terms of action was simply submitting to a process called baptism. That's it. You're my son. <laughs> I'm well pleased. But what can you expect? If you're going to be baptized, we've got a couple of children and, and, and uh, an adult here this morning to, to be baptized. But if you want to be baptized, well, I've, I count probably about 25 towels up here that are prepared and ready for an avalanche of people who want to, then just be open to that. So the, but what can you expect? What can these people expect about baptism? Well, here's what happened to Jesus. It says here that, first of all, the heavens were opened. Something is opened that comes from heaven when obedience to God takes place. Okay, it opens something. But what's the, something else that can be expected? It says the Spirit of God. There is a, a heightened activity of the Holy Spirit in one's life. It says the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. I don't know if a dove will come floating out of the, the ceiling on you and such like Jesus did, but I can say to you, what can you expect if you'll obey the Holy Spirit today, if you'll obey the prompting of the Lord, if he's tugging on you, knocking on your door to those who are prepared, to those who are unprepared, you can expect something opens out of heaven for you. Second thing is you can expect a heightened, a heightened awareness, a heightened activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. All right? And it says, And a voice from heaven said, you can expect that God will speak, that you will hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. My obedient ones hear my voice. You can expect that the, the, the voice of the Lord, the whisper of God in you will be raised. And then this thing that is so important that we seek for through so many other avenues rather than coming to the one who actually knows us and holds our identity. This is my beloved son, he says. You can expect an aff affirmation from your heavenly father. This is who you are to me. This is who you are to me. The importance of who you are will enter into you in a greater way. There's four things that happened to Jesus Christ as the pattern man who's the pattern for every single one of us who was pioneering our life, our real life. He was pioneering when he was doing these things. Four things took place in his life 
The heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit came and sat upon him in a fresh way, powerful way. Uh, he heard that voice, <laughs> that unmistakable voice. And what he said to him is, is, this is who you are to me. Four things that you can expect if you will obey the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him in baptism today. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you to be active all over this building today. Please, oh God, do an amazing work of transforming, changing, rearranging, helping, Lord, this place, helping us as the body of people here to be what you need us to be in relationship to these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, practically, what we need you to do is we need you to be praying and be participants in terms of actively praying for the people. Then if God gives you something, we may have room to, to have a lot of people share. We may not. Um, we've got a few to get through. Uh, so we want to make sure that we, we minister to them, pray for them, all those good things. But that doesn't mean that what God's given you, you can't write it down and you can't give it to that person. Are we with me? All right. So let's all be working together and praying and we'll prophesy and those good things. Second thing, we got that? We're all attended. This is where everybody's since I'm, I might as well just sit here and watch with you. I'll, I'll keep talking. All right. But um, so we're all participating. A second thing is that if you want to be baptized, come see Michelle. She's the recording secretary here today, and she'll help you and put your name. Um, second, third thing, if you are here in support crew, if your family, you know, if it's one of the children here in the children's minute, then come over here on either side and stand in support. Uh, we'll try to keep the front area as clear as possible here, but the front, uh, the, the sides, come and support them and stand with them. And let's uh, do this as family. Who's the first one? Okay. Greg, we're going to start with you. I said we're going to end with you. We're going to actually start with you. Come on here, Greg. Okay. Is this support crew? Yeah. Mom? All right. Now, this is Sharon over here. She's part of us. Yeah. Sharon, when, when did you come to know the Lord? Um, three years ago in the past February. Wow. Has it been an incredible ride? It's been amazing, yeah. I wouldn't say easy, David, but mm. amazing, yeah. The benefits are huge, yeah. I just love Jesus. He's the answer. And this is a little miracle. Yeah? Of, Who is this? This is Sophie. And Sophie wasn't meant to be. But it was only um, only God. So um, I've been talking to God this week about Greg and praying yeah. that he'll get here. And um, God showed me um, that he gave you, Sophie, Greg, your little miracle. And that he sees how much you love Sophie. And he says... I love you more than you could ever love Sophie. And you don't have to earn that love. You don't have to do anything. He loves you now. Um, and also, I just, this morning I went, went to my word um, to ask God to show me, um, thank you, um, if he had a scripture for you. And I'll just read that. Um, earnestly remember. Uh, sorry, okay. Which one is my, it? Yeah. It's this one, David. How about if I lend my eyes to you here? <laughs> earnestly remember that marvelous deeds that he has done, his miracles and wonders, the judgments and sentences which he pronounced upon his enemies as in Egypt. Remember, that's the key area. Remember the marvelous deeds. You look at Sophie, God wants you to know that that's how much He loves you. Yeah.
This is your boy. Yep, this is my oldest son. Your oldest? Yep. Wow. Yeah, very proud of him too. Awesome. Greg, come on here, sir. Do you love the Lord Jesus? Yes, I do and always have. Wow. So um, what is it that you're looking to the Lord today for? Um, to be quite honest, I've always known the Lord, but this is my way of saying I love you, Lord. Um, and the only way that I can other than telling him in prayer that I have all my life. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah. That's fantastic. Is the water warm? It is. It's nice. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> well, Greg, this is um, this isn't a small step. It looks just like water, all that, and it, it it'll be over and done with in just really a few seconds. But heaven right now is watching. Heaven takes notes of this. And so this is very powerful. So we're going to now baptize you. If you just step back and, and I think we're going to now baptize you. And we, uh, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus and your obedience to him, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Psalm 100, it says, The Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And you have a daughter here. Um, his faithfulness to you is there. But it's, it's, more than, it's more than just His love for you and stuff like that. It's more to, be, to do with He's got His hand on you. He's got His eyes on you. He loves you. And He wants it to carry on. He wants that to carry on. He wants you to carry on. He wants that to become a generational thing. He wants, he wants your commitment to him to be passed on, to be passed on, to be passed on. Generationally, um, you know, the benefits and the, the blessings of God is generationally. The, uh, uh, the Bible talks about um, um, the blessings of God, you know, for those that serve God. It goes on to generations. And you want to bless your daughter? Serve God. You know, and that's the same thing. The Lord is good. You know, you've got a, your mother that, that now knows the Lord. I don't know how long you've known the Lord, but it started to, to, to a, a generation, it dropped down to another generation, drop it down to another generation, carry those songs and let the blessing of the Lord and then the, the prospering of the Lord will come as well. Someone else, you've got a word or you just want to speak something to uh, Greg right now? Is that you, Phil? Come on, Phil. Philippe. Okay. And uh, I just saw like there was uh, clothing being taken off you, and um, I'm not asking you to do that. But um, and then 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 God said it's like He's going to put on a new armor upon you, a new armor. And so um, I looked up the verse that says, put on the armour of God. And it says so that you can stand against the, the, the evil forces that are going to come against you. There's a new walk in your life from this moment on, from today. 25 to 10, Sunday morning. The armour of God, He's going to clothe you in it. Clothe you in it from your head to your feet. Right? A new thing is happening. A new thing is happening today. Father, we pray for the walk that this man has ahead of him. Each step that he takes, we know and we agree that we stand with him and with you, Lord. Help him in the things that he has before him. Uh, settle his mind. 
Father, I pray that as he walks, there's a peace that passes all understanding that goes through his head, through his body, through his hands. He knows where to put himself. He knows that in the morning as he rises and he reads the word of God, that it will become a, uh, an overflowing fountain out of his mouth during the day. Father, we pray for this armor that he has put on today. Cover him from head to foot in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. Have your way. Yeah. Have your way. Refresh and renew <laughs> his heart yes, today. Lord. Renew his mind today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful. Well, Greg, as we just uh, finish off here, uh, taking that, uh, I was standing over there and I felt uh, just that word soldier. Do you have something? Okay, Curry. I want to finish this. Yeah. The moment you came up out of the water, the scripture that came to my mind is I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to Very overcome good. the power of the enemy. The Son of Man appeared to destroy the work of the enemy and he's giving that to you, not just in your own life, but I believe in the lives of others, that your testimony of the things that he's going to set you free of and the things that he has set you free of, that he's imparting that, that you can set others free because he of who he is and the power that he's given. Cool. So here's what you're going forward in your life in terms of the thinking that needs to change. You're not just a follower of Jesus. You're not just an average Christian anymore. You can't afford to be that, sir. What God's saying is I need you to be a soldier. I need you to have a soldier mentality. I need you to think like a soldier. Okay, in protective terms of family, loved ones, but also in terms of standing your ground and keeping ground that's been gained, as well as advancing and going forward in your life. You've been at the same place for a long, long time. And God's not condemning over that, but he's saying you cannot, sir, stay at that place any longer. Here's your entrance out and in two, but you need to have a new mindset soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Oh. So we had two scheduled. They didn't able to come, but there'll be Take next service and the following. So that's anyone else? I didn't have a song. Let's just worship the Lord. Lord, just speak to our hearts. Yeah. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own This, this dear this soldier here is world famous here in Change Point. Um, you know, he was um, the one that played the uh, part of um, Samuel Marsden in our um, Christmas production here. So well. Uh, come here, doctor. That was 200 years ago. I know. <laughs> come forward. 
<laughs> hey, you're looking good for your age. Yeah. Yes. Here you go. Um, yes, well, there have been a lot of changes in my life in the last five years. Um, and I'm just aware that it's very easy to rely on the past, things of the past, passions of the past, um, achievements perhaps of the past and rely on them. And I'm very anxious that I shouldn't rely on the past. I have a real desire that God should rekindle the passion that I've known in the past. It'll come in a different way through different media, to different expressions. And um, David expressed the things that I long for more than anything else so beautifully this morning, that I should know the openness of heaven and the goodness of God, that I should hear from God, that he should speak personally to me and I should know that, that I should have the Spirit of God descend on me in a way that brings the power of God and the gifts of God, wow. and that I should end my days knowing that God says, well done, you good and faithful servant. And those things haven't been in my life evident in the last few years, and I want to be sure they come back again in fresh measure. Anybody want to come stand as support crew around this fella? Some of you fellows that know him? Morvin, do you want to come? You feel free? Okay. Wow. Clive, during worship, God gave me a scripture and a glimpse of what would happen this morning, and I believe it's for you. I feel as you go under the water, there'll be grave clothes falling off you. There have been cloaks of death and oppression upon you, and as you go under the water, those grave clothes are going to fall off, and you will come up with new life. Okay, you can come in red pants if that's what new life looks like. <laughs> wow. Stretch your hands towards. You got your hearing aids out. He's all set. Wow. Lord, as we... Um, Stand with our brother. This man represents God, not just himself, but so many of us in this room who need a fresh touch of heaven. We've had touches and we've walked in measures in times past. So God, we join with our friend in baptizing him not under repentance of, of sin and the sense of a salvation, but Lord, a repentance of sorts of turning afresh away from any past, even things that are good. It's like Paul who said, this one thing I do, forgetting that which lies behind, I press forward towards the mark of the upward call, the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we join with them that, God, you would do what you, what happened to Jesus would happen to him. Heaven would open. The Holy Spirit activity would come in a stronger measure and way. He would hear the voice, and, God, he would receive a greater understanding of who he is in Christ Jesus. So he can finish strong and finish his race, Lord, in fullness, not just barely getting there but God a grand entrance of Lord Jesus what you've called him so Clive we baptize you in the name of the Father the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Woo! going to gather around him where we're going to pray for supernatural healing and power and strength and I felt as you went under that water that's part of the grave clothes and who says who says you have to finish a week not the Lord God we speak healing in Jesus name God from the very top of his head down to the very soles of the bottom of his feet God we declare healing, God, that which in his back has seized and is crumbling and falling apart. God, we speak life and we speak holy. And God, we speak, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll pull it together and you'll strengthen the very bones. These bones will cry out and they'll come together again, God. And Father, we speak life into these bones. We speak life into this body, Father. We speak life into Him, Lord. In every way be made whole in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, God, we speak life, God. We speak healing, God. We speak wholeness in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we just speak healing right now through this man's entire body right now. I rebuke all sickness in Jesus' name. We drive you out in the power of the name of Jesus. You are cursed by the power of the blood. In the name of Jesus, we just speak life. Speak life. Resurrection life. Resurrection power through this man's entire body from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Now be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power and your presence. Lord, just rest upon him right now. Rest upon him, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, fill him, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, just thank you for a new found freedom in Christ. Father, for love of Christ. Father, be Father upon this brother of mine, on Clive, Lord. A deep love, Father God, for you and for souls, Lord God, for the lost. Lord, I ask that in Jesus' name, Father, this is a new day, a new beginning for Clive, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. New freedom, Lord. New freedom, Lord God. Abundant life flowing through him, Lord God. Abundant life, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just felt um, before we baptized you, and I just feel I felt all you guys are standing here. Just stay here, and I just feel felt really significantly, and it's just beating in my heart to have a lot of the youth, my youth leaders and youth. Don't make me call you out by name. Just came out for it. I came out for it. Uh-huh. Henry, 
um, a few others, but if you guys could come forth and any of the children that might have just burning on their heart, uh, Christian, if you want to come over here, any of the children that want to come with. And I just really feel um, we're a church of impartation. And there is something miraculous that's happening amongst the hearts of this church. And I don't want it, we don't want it to be a youth thing. This isn't something it's a youth thing. I've met, it's not down to an age. I've met 15 year olds that have heart of 80 year olds. I've met 80 year olds that have the heart of young youth. And I just want our youth that I know God's doing something, burning something in this church. And I want them to impart into you that youthful heart that he's burning that is not limited by boundaries. Today, Pastor David talks about not limiting the boundaries. It's religious boundaries that limit that this is what you can do and this is what you can do. And we put boundaries around those things. But I want you to be a representation of something that he wants to do in this place to break through and just to smash something out in the, um, in the generations and in the spirit through impartation of our youth. So I'm going to hand it over to them and let them do what they want with it and pray over you. But also to stand, all, I see there's a wide variety of ages standing right here. And I want us to be a representation of what God's doing in the spirit, in this body, in this house. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray any generational curse anything that has came upon this man from generations, any generational cancer or any cause upon this body, Lord. I pray that you can break it off in the name of Jesus. I pray that it can all leave, Lord. I pray that any pain this man may suffer will leave, Lord. I pray that he can leave many people to you, Lord, with his testimony. Lord, I pray that anything that will come through, he will break upon your name, Lord. I pray that he can just use your name to break Past curses. I pray that he can heal many people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just come before you right now, God. We just um, we just declare healing over this body, Father. Um, let it not just be a physical healing, God, but let it just be a spiritual healing right now in Jesus' name. We just understand that um, what you have for him, Father, in the spiritual realm is just so much bigger and so much better than what we have for the physical realm, Father. So we just pray spiritual healing right now in Jesus' name. We just hear his heart cry right now, and we just just pray that you would just satisfy that heart cry right now in Jesus' name. That he would be fulfilled, Father, that he wouldn't finish the race weak, Father, and empty, but he would just be filled with your spirit, God, and he would be filled with your dreams once again, and that he would just live out what you have for him, Father. Yeah, you'd give him that right now in Jesus' name. Impart that to his heart, Father, right now. Thank you, God. Lord, we just ask for your freedom just to come upon him right now and that you'll just break off anything that is hindering his relationship with you and that's stopping him from connecting with you, Father. And we just pray that um, as this baptism has just occurred, we just pray that you will just um, pour out fresh revelation upon him, that his dreams will just be so vivid and just be you speaking to him, Father. Thank you, Lord. Um, when we were um, praying for you, before you went under the water, I just... Uh, I just felt God saying that uh, you've been fruitful, but he's been pruning you, and he's making you more fruitful. And, um, and the, 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 you know, you, you are not, you're not going to die off and perish, but you're going to become more fruitful, more green, more fresh. And, and the, the words that I said, and I don't know where to find it in Scripture in a hurry, but that you're going to have green leaves, leaves that are healing for the nations. Dad, we ask right now that you'd fill them with your fire. Amen. Right now, the fire. Because Clive, it's not that you don't have a fire, but it's sometimes it's the junk of life can just get thrown on it. And so we take off that junk and that flame is going to get relit again. And you're going to burn with a passion for Jesus. You're going to burn for a passion to run with his gospel. Jesus, I ask right now that you'd fill them with the fire of you. A fire that only comes from you, only comes from heaven. So, Dad, fill them right now. Fill them right now with that fire. 
fill them right now with that passion. And Jesus, come on. Come on, Jesus, right now. We know you want to do it, Dad. Release it. We release your fire, Dad. Just as you walked forward um, this morning, the word that came to me was humility. And I really sense that you have walked forward humbly to honor God and to take steps to enter into something new, just humbly. And because of your act of humility, the next generations are going to benefit. And God's saying to you, I'm going to honor you for your act of humility. You're walking humbly with your God, and he's going to honor you for what you've done. And these generations are going to benefit from your walk of humility. So I just bless you in Jesus' name for your humility. Oh, team, thank you. Clive, thank you. God bless you. All right, folks, thank you. I don't think it was insignificant that um, Clive um, was Samuel Marsden because I think that um, what he's doing, what he's, I, I honour him for what he's done, for his conviction um, to be made new and I think it's prophetic for all of New Zealand. He's... he's he was prophetic for Samuel Marsden in our in our um, video presentation, and he's prophetic now as well for the renewing that's needed for the letting go of the old, the letting go of the religion and the, the stale. We all need it individually, um, letting go of things that we're used to, things that the way that it's used to be done. And we, we think that we need to just do what we've always done, but it's got to be new. It's got to be new. And in New Zealand, it's got to be new again. It's got to be just like that across the land. So, Alison, this is Alison. Alison, for you that just watch this, uh, it's done something for me. I pray for our church, our older people, because we hear it all the time. That's just a young people's church. No, it's a family. It's a generational family. And what Clive has done is actually a picture. So I'm gonna ask Allison to pray. If you wanna join in that prayer, I'd like for you to make a commitment to us standing. If you don't feel to, that's fine. Total freedom here. But you want to stand and say, I want to identify with that act. You don't have to get into the waters. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. But there's that in the spirit of humility, in the spirit by which an older gentleman has stood up today and said, I need a fresh start. I need a fresh relationship. I need a fresh moving of the spirit in my heart. So I'm here and I'm standing with my hand up. I'm one of those. I'm one of those. Father, we stand here today and we commit ourselves afresh. No longer to hold on to the old, to what we know. We throw it behind us. Forgive us, Lord, for holding on. 
It's got to be you. Jesus, it's got to be you. It's got to be fresh. I prophesy the newness over this nation, over this body right now. I prophesy the newness, the freshness, that we would come like children to you. We know nothing. We throw it all behind. We consider it rubbish. We consider it dung, what we know. We throw it behind us. We lean not on our own understanding. We've got to have the fresh bread from heaven. Father, we open our ears. Let the Spirit open our ears. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Prophesy it over this body, over the nation in Jesus' name. Father, have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Break us open. Break us open. We yield ourselves completely to you. Completely to you. Nothing of the old, but it would be all of the new. Thank you. We praise you, Lord. So, God, we just make that offer to you today in childlike faith. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Well, here's a couple that uh, <laughs> God's doing new things. Come here, sir. Come on, man. Come here. Um, for 15 years, I've spent myself and uh, our family has spent ourselves doing what we believe God told us to do. And, um, and you know, it ended in tears in July last year. Because um, just not knowing ha- how to do it, and doing it in my own strength, not knowing how to be intimate with God, not knowing how to um, hear, his, hear him every, you know, as Jesus said, I go, I do what my father says. And um, just recently God said to me, you know, seek, you know, just lay awake all night and just, what, what do I do? What do I do? I want yeah. to do something, you know. Uh, I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a person that, you know, I... I I believe in action, you know. God, give me something to do. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've just, you know, it's just what I've done the last 15 years, you see. And um, he said, finally he spoke and said, seek me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And um, I was like, nah. <laughs> That's not you. <laughs> you know, you tell me to go and climb a mountain or something. Um, and uh, you know and, and he just repeated that and repeated that and repeated that and um, you know and then um, praying with David just last week and you know the word was um, get about your get about your father's business you know well, he actually said it God said get about my business and um, you know that was really neat because when God said get about my business it implied that I was the son so, um, you know, this is, um, this is about putting aside uh, a lot of uh, pain, a lot of grief, a lot of sin as well. This is repentance, some belief. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all about wanting more from God and uh, wanting to get about his business. I'm joining you, a fresh start. And God's just saying, you know, to take out that heart of stone and he'll give me a heart of flesh. Yeah. Thanks, God. Courage. Yeah. Uh, 
we need to really pray for because they've, they've stewarded and they've carried, in a sense, a supernatural idea. Now it's been outworked and tried to be outworked in the arena of business. And anything and everything that you can imagine could go wrong has gone wrong, all right? And so they've had to sow that literally into the ground and let it die. So um, we've been privileged to walk with them and just talk with them and privately and help them. Their family here has been very supportive. Their family home is threatened in the sense of having to sell. They've had to sell everything and yet God supernaturally is keeping them like ravens, you know, keeping them alive. So we acknowledge that and such, but um, there's something that is supernatural and there's a sense uh, that I can safely say from processing just simply that they've come to the end of themselves, which is okay. God will bring us there. I, I've shared with you before, God wants to bring all of us to a place where we'll say you alone, you alone. That's where God wants us to go. You alone have the words of eternal life. You alone are my joy. You alone. So um, we join with you, Ray and Shirley and the Mountford family. Why don't you guys stand up close to the tank here? And uh, you can even probably just by in terms of identification, just, just put your hand in the water with them as a family to join with mom and dad as they lead this family in a fresh new beginning, okay? Stretch your hands out towards them. Lord, we take this new step. Lord, for this entire family right now and say in the name of Jesus, the governmental name of heaven, in the name of Jesus, let old things be passed away and behold, new things come. So, Lord, we baptize them for a fresh beginning, a new beginning. And we do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surely, everybody here in this room, always we always want the resurrection power. You don't get that without death. And before you went under this water, God's declaring death so that he might live again and so that you might live again. And that which was dead shall live again. That which was dead shall live again. New life and resurrection life. And it's just not a bunch of words. You know, God honors obedience. God honors faith. And you guys have been faithful. And He declares that over your life. And over the life of your family, you've been faithful. Even when everything was falling apart, you were faithful. And God honors that. But that even was put to death today. It's a fresh start. It's a brand new start. Don't look to the past, but look forward to what God has for you. Don't try to wear that old garment again of doing it and doing it. If I just did this, if I just did this, this would happen. Let God do it all because that which was dead shall live again. So Father, we declare, Lord, over them the spirit of life and liberty and freedom. And God, we just thank you, Lord, that God, you give us abilities, you give us gifts and talents and, and everything. And God, subject to you, God, May it flourish now in Jesus' name. God, that which was tried to be taken from a Lord will be restored a hundredfold, God. We speak that over their life, God. A hundredfold return, God, from everything that has been sold, everything that God has been put to death. God, we thank you for resurrection power now, new life.
life and liberty. And Father, a new way of doing life, God. We speak life over them. God, thy kingdom business at hand in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we declare over the family, God, just a just an awakening. Lord, in a sense, God, of truly, God, you're in control. And truly, God, you're leaving, leading them. And Father, it says, Lord, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. So God, they are secure in you. And we thank you for that, God. Amen. I'm um glad you went and saw David today, uh, this week and God told you to get on with his work because and um, I came here today and the Lord gave me a word but he didn't tell me who it was for and, and um, when nobody um, other people were missing I thought oh well um, maybe I was wrong but he impressed it on me again it's in Joshua 1 and it's God's word to Joshua and in verse 7 um, halfway through uh, it says um, do not turn um, from it that's the word of God do not turn from it from the right or to the left um, that you may be um, successful in whatever you do do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth and meditate it on it on it day and night so you'll be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful for have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Ray, this morning the Lord put you on my heart. As I sat over there and you were just over here, the Lord said, Go for them. And I thought, well, in what way? And when Pastor David said about others stepping forward for baptism, then the Holy Spirit confirmed that's what we're going after. And I thought, wow. Then to see it on a brother for such a beautiful thing. And then he said, John chapter 1 verse 12 is for you. There is, right at the beginning, when Jesus entered this very world, the Word became flesh. And a few verses later, he says, And to those who received him, he believed in his name. He gave the power to become children of God. Your identity is not in the world. Your identity is in him. And I believe that for you. Lord bless you and that identity. Amen. A practical picture that was for the whole family, that God has had the whole family in an amazing water slide and it's been very contained and sometimes cramped and dark and you haven't known where you're going necessarily as a family but as you came out of the water that was just amazing like all of you were propelled out now I haven't been on water slide but I've seen them come out and they shoot them out like crazily and as you came out of that water slide and you are coming out now it's like God saying trust me you're gonna look differently you, you're going to see things differently. And all the things that Pastor Linda and the others have said is like, that's the coming out, that there won't be that containment and darkness and upside down as you're spun around in, the, in that winding round and round. But actually it's like a propulsion to, to a new place and a new journey in Him. Wow. Well done. Well done. To the glory of God. All right. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. We're going to uh, we're going to take a pause there and uh, finish off this service. Back at it here in about thirty or forty minutes, praising and worshiping in round two. If you're here and the Lord whispers to you and has whispered to you about
being baptized. There's next service, and then there's the service tonight. So uh, we'll be doing that. But just in the theme, I don't know if you've caught it, but the Lord is talking renewal. The Lord is talking about various things. This afternoon, Lynn and I are going to our Papamoa location, and we're going to participate in a service where we're going to completely offer Change Point Papamoa. We're going to anoint people with oil because the Lord's been speaking there about a fresh start and a brand new beginning. So we're going to start with Johnny and Donna, our pastors there. We're going to anoint them. And then everybody who shows up that uh, they've been fasting and praying for this afternoon, we're going to anoint them with oil. So there's a thematic element like God's after that he's just speaking to all of us to be open uh, for old things to pass away, new things to come. Do you agree with that? All right, stand for closing prayer. Lord, the, uh, the ones who've been baptized, each one of them, God, is a prophecy to us. Each one of us, Lord, from the word to being a soldier, Lord, to uh, Clive standing in his generation and saying, I need a new relationship. Lord, to this couple, Ray and Shirley and their family, saying we need a brand new beginning. Lord, thank you. To, uh, to Greg, I mentioned him already. So we thank you. We pray, Father, for Papamoa, that God, you'll bless them too. This afternoon as they gather at 4 p.m., that, Lord, you'll pour out your Holy Spirit in a fresh way. So, God, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you've done in this service and, Lord, what you're going to do throughout the rest of this day. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen.